What are you doing there, guy? Hmm? Hey, my little boy. That's Lucky Boy. Yeah, that's a little good guy. Yeah, he's a good boy. He's about a year and a half now. I rescued rescued him out of a you know one of these homes, and I thought he was the cutest one there, so I brought him home. And he's turning out to be a good boy. Well, howdy, friends. We're back at the old garage again, and uh, thought we'd start on a new project. And, you know, my wife, she comes in here and she says, What a terrible mess this place is. I said, Oh, it is? I said, It actually looks pretty clean to me. I mean, look at there's room on the bench there, so there's got to be some room to make a new project. Anyway, clean workbench is a sign of a sick mind, as they say, right? So, what I've got going here today is uh, kind of a quick little deal. I got an 18 inch uh, Camco Oaklawn bass drum here that needs some inlay on the hoops. Um, and I happen to have a roll of, this is called uh, Gray More, or as I like to call it, Gray Moi. And um, that came off of a Tom. And I rescued it off of a Tom because um, I needed the inlay. I know I'm a terrible person. So, um, that's what I thought we'd work on today. The story of this bass drum is, I've had this set for, uh, I guess, 40 years. An old friend who got me even more into old drums than I already was, uh, a guy named Arno Lehman, down there in Orange County, California, where I used to live. <coughs> called me one day and he says, Hey, Bruce, uh, what do you know about Camco drums? I said, well, I know they're pretty good drums. And he says, uh, well, what do you think about an 18, 12, 13, 14, and the matching snare drum for 50 bucks? I said, I think it sounds like a pretty good deal. So, yeah, these were in a pawn shop. Can you believe it? This is back when no one cared about uh, Oaklawn or uh, round badge stuff. I mean, there was a few people around, but you had a few people down in, in uh, L.A. like Drum Doctors and Paul James and people like that. They knew about this stuff, but in general, people didn't know about these drums. But I kind of did. And so he he went and got these things for 50 bucks. A whole set. And um, I asked him, I said, uh, hey, what are you going to do with those drums? He says, well, I'm going to restore them and sell them. And back then they probably went, would have went for, you know, three, four or five hundred bucks maybe, you know. And so I said, well, how about I give you a finder's fee for those drums and let me take them on. And so I gave him double his money. I know it's a it's quite a crying shame, isn't it? A hundred bucks for all these drums. But I had a vision. So uh, I've still got the set after 40 years of owning them. And it's time to get this inlay on this on these hoops. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to take you through that process cutting inlay, putting it in the hoops, and, and then gluing it in. So that's the long story. Now, less talk, more work. All right, well, anyway, so the first thing you got to do when you uh, start this uh, cutting this material is <clears throat> clean your table off really good. You want to need 
dirt or you know particles to stick up through and make your knife go off course so I sweep that off real good make sure the tables flat and then I don't care how you think oh my my knife blade is only been used once don't worry about that change it put a brand new blade on it man you got to have the sharpest blade you can on this it's the most important thing or one of them this is a uh, this straight edge here is actually for flooring i picked up a couple of these years ago it's really straight really thick metal and uh, you don't ever see these things but i picked them up somewhere and then um, I'm just making my first line here, first score here, because the edge was not straight and true. So I've cut a little bit off here, just that much. And my first, I'm going to go down here, and I'm not trying to take this all off in one bite. I'm just taking it off gradually, running my blade down there. See, so you'll see it starting to come off there. And now we have a nice straight edge. Now we have a straight edge to work with. Now we'll be able to measure this thing and get our desired width. For these hoops let me measure that real quick so what I do next here is I uh, I measure it out with like a this machinist's uh, ruler it's actually in millimeters and uh, I clamp this my cutting guide down to the table and clamp the material down as well and I measure it all the way up to make sure we're square and as I'm cutting and I'm holding this down too so our blade doesn't wobble so here we go I'll cut my first line just gently I'll only go up so far Don't forget, you're not going to find this material just anywhere. So, you don't have any room for error, really. So, I'm very careful about how I use it. They don't make this gray more anymore. So let's try this out, how we're doing here in this hoop. Oh yeah, perfect. Look at that. Beautiful. And then we'll start our new line here. Just start it out slowly. get a guideline going there not trying to cut through all the way just trying to get a little bit of bite every time thing off of here and you'll have your strip so there's that strip Let's see if I actually fits in there really 
nice. Okay. And that's how I do it. Let me cut a few more of these strips for you. And we'll come right back to you. So Bruce, let me ask you this. What happened to the original inlay in these hoops? Oh, I'm glad you asked me that. You know, I don't really know what happened to the original inlay. I don't remember if these hoops had inlay or not. Because the hoops that I had on this drum were just blonde hoops that were more like the Shunit style with no inlay groove in it. So I don't really remember. They might have just been black hoops with no inlay. I find that hard to believe though, being Camco Oaklawn drums. But it's been 40 years and I don't really remember what happened. So that's the short and long of that question. Okay, this is the third inlay I'm cutting. And it's coming along quite nice. Don't get in a hurry on these things because if the knife starts moving around, you won't uh, be happy with the results. You know, they can't be sticking above the, the groove. And that, if you get them a little too wide, then they're going to be sticking above. Look at how, how nice those fit. Hopefully you can see that. So that's what we want. Yeah, sorry about that, uh, that story I had to tell you about how I got these. Uh, it must really hurt to know how much pay you got to pay for these drums nowadays. You know, an 18 inch Camco set is like the, the prime set to have, like the, the premium set that in the 20s with the 12 and the 14 the matching aristocrat snare drum uh, even for a hacked up set you're going to pay five grand for it. but you know just to let you know that was what was going on back then when i was a kid and i was in my 20s and um didn't have much money um working on cruise ships playing drums and uh, So uh, it was uh, just the time, and I remember going into pawn shops and uh, music stores, and these things would just be sitting there, these kind of sets, these Oaklawn, Chinook, L.A. sets would just be sitting there. No big deal. So that's just the history of it. Okay, we've got that hooped off now. I'm going to show you the rest of the process on um, what we'll do with these drums, with this uh, drum, to get it back to normal. Beautiful drum, isn't it? Isn't that a beautiful finish? Yeah, I really like that. You know, these grooves on these hoops have to be clean before you start gluing on them so I don't know what you guys will use I have a uh, a nice set of Freud chisels and this one just happens to fit in this uh, groove really nicely but you know you can find something to get in there and clean all this glue out and any 
anything that's going to cause like a, a lump underneath the gluing. Just want to go through that and clean it all up. And then, uh, the, you know, the inlays will sit real flat. So I'll just go around each hoop like that. And Yeah, this guy, uh, Arno Lehman, he was uh, an old furniture salesman, um, World War II vet. He used to tell me about being um, in some battles uh, in uh, Germany. He was in Germany. He was a really nice, knowledgeable person, but... Um, Somehow he got into old drums and he'd go to swap meets. He was uh, quite old back then. He was, I think it was late seventies. And uh, I'd go over to his place and uh, he would um, show me uh, old drums that he found. He'd have WFLs and Ludwigs. You know, back then they were numerous out there. You could find them. And um, one day he showed me uh, what was a, a, a Radio King, which I had never heard of a Radio King. He said, you, you know what a Radio King is? I said, no, I don't know what that is. And, um, you know, it just looked like an old uh, beat up drum. By the way, this, this inlay. Uh, I installed years ago. It was on another drum set that I refinished. And um, I ended up uh, selling it minus these hoops because I wanted it for my my Camco drum. I gave them some uh, precision hoops. But anyway, um, so that was my introduction to Radio King drums. They just It just looked like an old drum. It didn't make any big deal to me, but I thought it was uh, actually just kind of, I thought it was a piece of shit, really. But um, now um, I think differently. And um, I think quite highly of Radio Kings. So, so we're getting all this inlay out. We'll clean these grooves out. And uh, I've got a lot of stories of Ar Arno, if you guys are interested. Um, uh, it, one of his famous lines was, Bruce, it's not what it's worth, it's what you can get for it. And I always kind of stuck with that one. It's not what it's worth, it's what you can get for it. So. Just because something's worth something doesn't mean that's what you're going to get for it. So that was one of his famous lines. What a great guy. One day I went over there and he had a Slingerland Fancher model. I don't know if you're familiar with those. Late 20s and it was in like like the sea green pearl. Oh, it was a beautiful drum. And uh, he had the bass drum. I think he had the whole all the traps and everything with it and um, I didn't know what it was you know to me if it wasn't Gretsch I, I really wasn't into it I was just always a Gretsch round badge guy back then so I think he might have got you know 250 back then you can only imagine what those drums are worth now So, that was kind of interesting. And we're, we're getting this hoop all cleaned up here. You can see how much junk's coming out of there. That's why it's so important to clean this groove out of here. And once I get all this inlay on here, I'm going to tape it off. Sand, give it a light sand 
because I've restored these suits before and they're in really good shape and I will uh, give them another coat of black just to give it a, a finished look so be right back with you okay so I've uh, taped up both hoops uh, taped up over the black paint so when I put glue in the grooves and I don't want to have all kinds of glue to remove off the paint it's just a lot of extra work tape's cheap so I'll peel that off when I get the inlays glued in and um, we'll probably work on this tomorrow it's getting real hot in here it's going to be about 107 here in Phoenix today so it's getting hot and I'm going to spend some time with my wife today and I'll get back with you tomorrow and we'll glue, re glue these and get everything beautiful. I think we'll even restore this drum uh, in this video. Get it all nice again. All right. Well, good morning to you. Well, we know how fragile these uh, more or satin flame finishes are. Uh, you can't hit them with lacquer thinner, they'll self destruct or just get become very foggy looking so it ruins them so what we do to keep this glue from getting on this is we put some just run some blue tape or whatever tape you've got around the um, the face of it and uh, so then we'll protect it so I'll do that and be right back to you. Here we've got our uh, strips ready to glue. I just taped them down here to the table and um, we'll run our glue along there. They're taped down so it's easy to get our glue on there. And we've got we got our hoops all taped up so ready to start applying the adhesive. Okay, I'm going to start applying this adhesive. Um, you only want to apply this glue one way. It says right on the can. When all else fails, read the directions. And so, uh, put a good amount on there and you'll have good results. I was watching a guy restoring some door panels on a car and he was going to put a new coat of uh, vinyl on there and uh, you know, there it was that brush and uh, he he only put the adhesive on Anyway, I'm not sure where that cut off my battery ran out, but um, getting back to that story, I was uh, watching his uh, video and it was hot outside and you could see that the material was bubbling. Plus he only did one side of the, he only ran the glue on like say the strips and not the, not the not the hoop so <laughs> it really doesn't work too well that way so anyway i'll get this done and let her sit around for a bit and we'll install it so what i've done is i've uh, i've basically taken a put a dot where this is where it would the claw would ride here right in the center of the claw every time the center of the claw is I put a little dot that way these three these three strips are equal length so I'm gonna run them start at the dot and run the first one as far as I can go up to the last dot then I'll cut it off right there in the middle of the dot and do the same thing with the next one and then that remaining strip I will use to fill in the two gaps of the uh, the other two hoops 
So I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so you notice I've taken the the uh, tape off of the hoops because I don't want the inlay to adhere to you know the tape and get turned into a big mess. Also taken the tape off the face of the wrap. So I start right here in the middle of the dot. Put it in there. And always kind of keep a good firm grip on it. And make sure it's right in the groove. And then just run my finger down there. My thumb down there and make sure it's adhered real good. Because once this stuff grabs, you're done. That's it. So I just continue my way around here. And I'm going to look for this last dot. See, you can see it ends and I'll be running here wild uh, up until that. So let me cut that off right where it, that dot rides in the middle and be right back. Okay, now I'm going to fill in the gaps on the last part of these hoops. So I just started the seam here. Attach it there and run her around. And we got to find out where we're going to end up. Which is right here. And I'll just make a mark and I'll cut it off. Okay, so there's our little seam right here. Um, I suppose you can see it right there. And I don't even think we need to nail these or uh, staple them or anything because you know, they're just really down there really good. So I'm going to go with what I have here. Don't even need to mess around. So these seams will be underneath the claws. You won't see them. Well, friends, I've uh, pretty much completed this bass drum. I've ordered a logo head for the an original uh, 60s head on eBay or, and that should be here maybe even today but I don't have it on right now I said I wasn't going to uh, staple these seams on the hoops but I did end up doing it um, so there's how that worked really nice I uh, sanded and painted the hoops as well and so um, I think overall the uh, drum does show, of course, a lot of wear, but it's still a beautiful drum and I wouldn't do anything to it. And hopefully you guys got something out of this, maybe just for your own viewing pleasure, I don't know. And maybe just because we all like Camco drums. And uh, until the next time, I want you to take care and have a great day.